Angeles? Come on, everybody's gonna know. When we were in Boston, it was like we'd wake up and we would be the only people we would know. And then when we came back to LA, I was miserable. Andrew has a girlfriend here, and so he wouldn't spend every minute with me. And some of the other guys know other people here and have friends and agents here, and they didn't want to spend that much time with me. Yeah, LA, it's kind of a little annoying because LA is just like a movie town. Call and they said this project was completely top secret. And I had sides from the West Wing that I had to read for the casting director. I was talking about, I think it was protecting the president. And here I am, 21 years old, speaking about protecting the president when I had no idea what I was doing or what the project was even about. I had no idea what it was called. It was the untitled Aaron Sorkin project. Now I can't remember. Do we hear your last name? No. no. That's what I was thinking. It's possible. It would just take a bit of searching. Yeah, but I, I don't want the audience thinking, how's that going to happen? Isn't it just easier if she says her last name? Now, most of you think you know the rest of the story, but you may not. The beginning of this revolution, now you're going to come back, was modest. The kick computer on the cover of that magazine had an 8080 processor in it. And unless you paid extra, you got 256K of memory. So the challenge when I wrote BASIC wasn't just that it had to run in 4K bytes, but it also that it had to leave room for the users to program in 4K bytes. What I'm going to want you to do is move the Japanese room around. I'm going to scoot you a little bit to the left. Yeah. Steve, do you want to start going with the other side? Yeah. Like you go down and then you go stop. And action. Now, you may think you know the rest of the story, but you may not. The beginnings of this industry were humble. That kit computer on the cover of the magazine had an 8080 processor in it. And this, you paid extra for a 1K memory board. You got 256 bytes. Now, there's no room for air on this. If you're too low and you're too far over. You need to be up a little bit, you need to be back a little bit. What's great is, is that David seems to just make films that he wants to see himself and for his own sensibilities, and that's all you can do, because as soon as you try to cater to anything outside of your own satisfaction, then you become a slave in a way, I guess. I still can't wrap my mind around him. He's such a unique guy. He speaks in such thoughtful and often esoteric ways that it's a little confusing at first. But I came to really appreciate this person who thought about what you're doing in the scene as much or more than you, and it's your job. And I think probably everybody on set can say that. He's probably thought about their job as much or more than them. When Jesse crosses out, you make a little bit of an adjustment back. Are you feeling you some decision making on my part? Yeah. Well, well, I'm feeling indecision. You just watch. And it's both intimidating and comforting. Intimidating because you feel like you're working for somebody who probably could maybe do it better than you. Like, I worry, I think you could do my part better than me. Welcome to Facebook. At the same time, it's also comforting because I know that when I do something that maybe I didn't feel was exactly right, he would have a better sense than I would about what needs to be. The only scene I dreaded was when we go to Palo Alto for the first time and we're like jumping off the house. All right, summer fun. Here we go. Total jackassery. You're enjoying yourself doing knuckle-headed, chuckle-butted nonsense. The reason I dreaded it was because I didn't see how it fit into Zuckerberg's like psyche. Ready? Okay, here we are. Last one, oh, and fun. Because I think it originally was scripted to open where Mark's on the top of the house, screaming and like excited and everything. And for all the thoughts I've had about Zuckerberg, I couldn't picture him doing that. And I couldn't picture myself as him doing that because it seemed too happy for him. And then luckily when we got to the set, they changed the blocking and I didn't have to be doing that. Okay. So d have I jumped into the water? No, you're just, just videotaping. You're time. just videotaping. Yeah. Okay. But it's also somebody goes, quick, let's get a picture. Okay, everyone, smile. You know, a, let's have a fake moment where we memorialize all the fun that we weren't having. You mean I'm doing that? Yeah, a tiny bit. It's just a little bit of like, well, let's make sure we get this so we can remember those. Oh, we can remember early. that we did have actual fun. Yeah. I had pretty clear ideas for what Zuckerberg would be during the movie and 
I just didn't like him being happy because it just didn't seem I didn't didn't seem to come from that. And then you watch videos of him and he's sometimes very happy. He occasionally releases videos and then there's interviews that he's done, most notably the 60 Minutes. It's very useful to have those kind of videos and I have his voice in my iPod so I could take the iPod to the set and have his voice in. But you know, when they call action, that stuff becomes kind of less relevant. Cut it. Good, reset. Resetting. Good job. Resetting. Resetting. It's going to be a bit of a reset. What about like in a Zuckerberg sense? Just walking out of the pool like self-satisfied, just walking out of the pool straight ahead. This is And then turn around and wait for it. Recreational? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, good. Recreational fun. It's going to be a little weird looking, but that's maybe right. Well, yeah. I mean, it's fine that it's awkward. I just don't want it to be, I just don't want it to feel like... You know, Rocky, so what if I just walk out of the pool? Like satisfied, then turn around and try to yeah, film it. Yeah, and, it, and it, it's almost like that I make sure I got that. You know what I mean? Okay. Yeah, let me good. make sure that I do the, Okay. That's a good idea. Yeah, great. Okay. And. Back. Ah! This conversation, upon meeting these guys, he doesn't know where, like we don't know where Sean Parker and Sean Fanning begin and end. He doesn't know where Mark Zuckerberg and Eduardo Saverin end and begin. Right. So he's there to go, I'm fans of what it is you guys do. By the end of the night, he's able to go, I'm fans of what, you do. it was right. nice to meet you. Right. You know what I mean? Right. It was nice to meet all of you, but it was really nice to meet you. Here we go. 115 takes six. Two. He's 25 minutes late. I found him Napster when he was 19. He can be late. He's not a god. What is he? He's 25 minutes late. Sean Parker is the co-founder of Napster. He's the mistress, <laughs> so to speak. He is the driving force that comes in between two best friends. You must be Eduardo and Christy and Mark. Great to meet you. Great to meet you. He doesn't come in without merit. He comes in with some experience that the other fellas don't have. And so I think that's why he has the ability to stir the pot. This is telling about Napster, and then we'll go back into you on, I didn't want to spend my 20s with a professional right. defendant. I brought down the record companies with Napster, and Case will suffer for their sins too. The irony there is just fascinating that Justin is playing Sean Parker, considering he's playing a guy who was one of the creators of Napster, which kind of in a way destroyed the music industry. You didn't bring down the record companies, they won. You want to buy a Tower Records, Eduardo? <laughs> I don't. Cut, cut, reset. So we got to figure out what this is going to be. So I think it's the drinks, it's those appetizers that have been discussed. They come. I do think we need to see people actually eating in this movie because I hate it. Movies when people eat. The scripted items are lacquer core. Uh -huh. Lobster claws and this tuna tartare. Everyone got a chance to mess about because there was this montage -y kind of thing that David did, which allowed Brenda, Jesse, Sean, and myself to just try and one up each other in terms of making each other laugh or, you know, just screw each other up. And the dynamics that were happening were really fun. Put that here. Oh, yeah, these are the scallops. These are really good. Really good. Watch your glass. There. Oh, she's done with this one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to take these. Got it? Got it. Are you going to drink yours? I don't think that Sean Parker, as he's written in the script, is conniving, but I do think he's calculated. I do think that he knows how to communicate a certain way to certain people. Drop the the. Just Facebook. It's cleaner. And I think he has an ease about him that Shit. Mark or Eduardo don't. And I think that's why he is so attractive to Jesse's character, Mark. I've been saddened by the fact that my performance as an actor in the film is being largely overlooked, and, uh, and that's unfair. I have two lines in the movie playing the ad executive. I did not cast myself. David said, you have to play this, uh, so I did. It was the one scene in the movie That's when I saw the first cut that I felt could be cut from the movie. Good one. I'm really happy I ended up here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's exactly what I wanted. <laughs>
Aaron was great. He was very, very funny in the scene. And it was kind of nice that he was there because the scene was fast paced and everything. And this is kind of like what we were doing every day. And so it's kind of nice to like share it with him. Jesus. Sorkin dialogue is hard. Ready? And action. Excuse me. Yes, sir. What sound is he making? Well, it is good. Once again. And faster on the. Faster, faster, faster. That's my. My parents took me to see plays starting when I was very, very little, and I was too young to understand Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf when I was nine years old. But I loved the sound of dialogue. It sounded like music to me, and I wanted to imitate that sound. So as a result, I'm very weak when it comes to plot because. I didn't understand what was going on uh, on stage, but I do enjoy writing dialogue that sounds like something. I'm going to the ladies' room. You got it. I'll go with you. Your date looks so familiar to me. She looks familiar to a lot of people. What do you mean? A Stanford BA named Roy Raymond wants to buy his wife some lingerie, but he's embarrassed to shop for it in a department store. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. Uh, blah. Is that a is that a parable? The screenplay isn't written to be read, it's written to be performed. So that part of it is crucial to me. It would be like writing music and not being around to hear the singer do it. I would recommend that anybody read Shakespeare, but more than that, I would recommend that you see it. These things are meant to be performed. And the music analogy is, is apt. I don't think any composer would want you sitting there just looking at the sheet music saying, oh, I can picture this or hear this in my head. This is interesting. But they want you to hear the best musicians, the best singers performing that stuff. Any bouncers, bartenders, or waitresses? Take 30% off the swing. Go-go dancers. And it has to be the same. Come on in, guys. Down here, basically, we're going to have music, we're going to have playback, it's going to be loud, there's going to be smoke, there's going to be lights, it's a club. If you're going to do strokes, two strokes at the beginning. That's what I program it to see the okay. girls when they're dancing. Good. Okay. We're going to take two strokes yeah. out for dancing out here in the center, some people at the bar. There's going to be a point that we're going to be recording the dialogue, so the music's going to stop. you got to keep acting because what we're doing is recording a clean track of dialogue up there. We can't have the music playing at the same time. So even if the music stops, just keep going, all right? See you here, cut. Playback! people off and isn't that what your face mash was about they're scared of me pal and they're gonna be scared of you the greatest act of anarchy is not to be the guy outside the walls throwing Molotov cocktails or, or spray painting outside the palace walls if you're the, the ultimate act of anarchy is you're in the king's suite you're in the Pope's quarters with spray paint with a can of crime on Our time. This time you're gonna hand him a business card that says, I'm CEO, bitch. <laughs> That's what I want for you. The one thing that I think is really, really important is that his ego does not allow him to sublimate himself to anyone. That's Mark Zuckerberg's hubris. That's why Sean can never sell the thing as you need to get rid of the war, you need to get me. Because the second he does that, Mark Zuckerberg's gonna go, this is, we're done. I agree with everything that you're saying, but I'm CEO, bitch is the church that they both go the to. The seed is planted, terror grows. Well said. A hundred schools by the end of the summer? Yeah. Tell you what. I've just had a phone chat with my daughter. She told me that she and her friends are already talking about the race, which they've seen via their computers. New website called Facebook. Do you have this in America? They have Facebook at Cambridge? 
and apparently Oxford and the London School of Economics. That's where her friends are. As an actor, you know, we love to play characters. That's hopefully why we got into this business. So it was like, you not only get to do a Fincher movie, but you get to work on two separate characters in a Fincher movie. So as an actor, that's that's a wet dream. You can't beat that. You let people in on the magic. Man. The actual process of filming it has been incredible. It's been more work than I've ever had to do. Double, actually. You know, there's a lot of switching back and forth during the day. What, what I'm minding, minding, what you should, and what you mind, should mind, is showing, showing up on Monday, Monday for a race that was run on Sunday. And now I am asking you for the 100th time, let's take the considerable resources at our disposal and sue him in federal court. But, you know, thankfully I had Josh Pence there with me the whole time, and we really worked together to create the perfect characters and, you know, the differences between the two, and I definitely couldn't have done it by myself. The distinction between the two of them? I think Cameron's definitely the more affable of the two, would make more of an effort to kind of come up and shake your hand and say, hi, how are you, you know, and put you at ease. Whereas Tyler, what we came up with was just a little more laid back and observing more. If you like him, if you don't, it's really no skin off his back. Here, now we're in the doorway, let him back. What's he gonna do? What's he gonna do? Splits the leg, what's he gonna do? Turns around. Got this nerve. Get up. Just walk over this. Just walk over. Just over. Like, oh. <laughs> Thank you. Super high. Five. Thank you. Boom. Cut to togetherness forever. And then especially what's interesting too is you've got this triumvirate, you know, because we have Divya and then Cameron and Tyler. So a lot of times in the script, Tyler and Divya are sort of, you know, paired up together in terms of, you know, they're on one side of the fence and Cameron's on the other. You know what? Screw it. Let's gut this nerd. I don't think it's a good twin, evil twin, but it definitely gives them two sides of the coin. <laughs> it was tricky because we had to be very cognizant of what the other was doing. You know, we'd have to watch ourselves a lot as we were filming on playback, which I know for a lot of people is like hell. But for me, this, this whole thing was just... Such an enormous learning experience. Cameron is preppier, Tyler is sweatier. Not also, Josh will start as Cameron today, and Army will start as Tyler. Okay, good. Here we go. And Josh. Josh and Army, I need you guys to switch places. And Army, I need you to assume the same position that Josh has right now. And then I need you guys to swap. I need to see if there's any difference in height for the B camera. Okay, we'll put Army back, we'll get both sides. You know what I think? I'm way ahead of you. Josh, can I just step out? Yeah. I got fired. Background in action. You know, we got to work with this guy Cameron Thor early on, and we kind of went through a lot of just the physical what? stuff. What we could do to make us similar, but at the same time different. Yeah. Cameron Winklevoss. Are you guys related? It's good. Fine. Yeah, we never heard that before. A big difference is maybe stillness. And that's something as an actor that's just really fun to play with. When you choose to move, when you choose to really be still. And cut it. Save that one. Cut it. And army, keep moving. Put your weight on your left foot too. Left foot. Okay. And then at the end. Before pre-production, I actually was auditioning. I watched Dead Ringers. And Jeremy Irons is amazing. And one thing that he talked about in an interview that I read was the way that he could tell the difference between the two characters is where he put the weight on his feet. You know, one of the brothers, he'd have his weight back on his heels. If he was the other, he'd be a little more forward on the balls of his feet. You know, kind of the guy that's a little more in your face and forward. So, you know, we tried to work on some of that stuff. But yeah, obviously a big challenge is having that be like a really subtle difference. In Dead Ringers, there was times when I couldn't tell which person he was. And I think that identical twins are like that a lot of the time. You wanna watch it again? No. Don't lie. You like watching movies. It's like watching movies, so graceful. You Mark Zuckerberg? I mean, it was interesting to watch Army go back and forth from the characters and Josh as well, because Josh is a phenomenal actor. You know, he's not gonna be seen in the movie, but he deserves a lot of credit because it was very helpful to have somebody who was really good working with you. And also it was like probably not the most thankful position to be in. I mean, he's the most beautiful man in the world. He'll have a fine life, and I'm sure get many acting jobs, but maybe this did have occasional frustrations. Hey, man, sorry. A couple of girls were freshening up in there. Sweet. At the same time, I don't pity him for a second. He'll be fine. He can go, uh, he can go cry over sex. 151 Baker, take one. Speed. Speed.
You know this is what they filmed Towering Inferno? That's comforting. Hey guys, come on back. And cut. Justin, you know this guy, so hey, your face should be happy. Okay. Take two. My face should look sad. Stay. Peter Teal. Hey guys, come on back. Sean, that's a great jacket. Well, <laughs> my first wardrobe fitting was at the Armani store in Beverly Hills, you know? It was kind of amazing to have Armani making your wardrobe. Okay. And then, do you want to see his hair more uh, roughed up? With they greased it back? No, no, I want it like this Just now. Like this? When you change him into his sporty spice look, then we can okay. arc our funk on. Jackie had done a lot of research on all the guys. So my first meeting with her, she talked about how Sean had all of his clothing custom made by Giorgio Armani. That's the new size. They really went all the way out. I mean, this says Giorgio Armani for Sean Parker. So, and I think he had his name uh, put on his suit. So it's amazing these days what you can find out about someone when you have to play them in a film. It makes a difference in how you walk, you know, and that makes a difference in how you talk because it changes your timing. You get to this point to where I didn't feel right until I had that Sean Parker hero watch on. You know, just being able to sort of move it around and and uh, it definitely makes a difference in the character portrayal. Like this. Now, let me ask you something. Who's Eduardo Saverin? Cut. Cutting. joked about, you know, how exciting can a bunch of people sitting around talking into computer screens be? But when you add to that Fincher's acceleration of the film, the fact that it moves like an F1 race, uh, that it's kind of like watching a very, very enjoyable car crash happen before your very eyes, because I think it's a brutal film Mark. about ambition. Mark! He's wearing it. Excuse me? He's wearing it. Is he? Yes. Bang. Story about it has to come out of this meltdown. Of it's going to be funny either way, isn't it? It's, it's that you don't have any, I have, I have but, but it has to be based on something. Oh, that's not no, 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 it's no. It's like, it. how could you? Yeah, I'm no, so angry was, and so hurt. Where the betrayal begun. So no. angry and so hurt yeah. at the same time. Both barrels. Well, what the hell's the chicken? I bet, I bet what the chicken I think obviously the nature of betrayal being betrayed by your brother, which is how I see the relationship with Mark. That's the universal theme for me. It's man's inhumanity to man. It's Cain and Abel, and I found that was enough. That was like, that's, that was the core to really explore the destruction that someone can do to you and having the opportunity to fight, to not allow that destruction to take over your life and to find a bravery and a strength and a self-worth in amongst someone telling you that you're worth less than nothing. That is something very, very powerful and strong to try to play. He sounds it on the desk? Yeah, I have a little metal plate that's oh, okay. going to go on. Oh, there wow. it is. Okay. So I have a little protective steel plate that goes under here that helps okay. destroy this. After he does that, is there, am I consumed with that my computer was just broken or not? No. This is bigger. This yeah. is the inevitable right. okay. come to Jesus. Okay. With you as Jesus. Sure. Okay. And roll. And action. Mark! Mark! He's wired in. Sorry? He's wired in. Oh, is he? Yep. How about now? You still wired in? Call security. You wish for 24 million new shares of stock. You were told that if new investors came along that you would... How much were your shares diluted? How much were his? You signed the papers. Sorry, cut it. Again, there we go. Cut. I'm not trying to do an Eduardo Savera impression. Oh my gosh, I would never dream of being so arrogant as to say that this is this is who this guy was. 
there's not much information out there about him that's easily accessible. And after trying to for a while, I realized that it doesn't matter. Uh, Andrew, I'm going to have you go another four inches to your left. I have as much information as I have, and obviously I want him, wherever he may be, if he sees the film, if his friends see the film, if his family sees the film, I don't. I don't want to have anything but a positive effect on his life. I have no bad intention towards him or towards any of the real people. It's a very tender thing dealing with um, dealing with someone's existence in this way. You're gonna blame me because you were the business head of the company and you made a bad deal with your own company? I was just trying to be as honest to myself, like putting myself in those shoes and using all of whatever it is that makes me human to try and live this very, very traumatic period of his life.